What's good, Jess Setters? Piggy Bank was arguably the pettiest diss song of all time. 50 Cent diss Fat Joe, Jada Kiss, and Nas on the track with what he calls factual statements. Fat Joe had to be one of the biggest goons in the rap game during that time, so 50 Cent dissing him like that sent shockwaves all throughout hip-hop. Especially in New York City, where Fat Joe and his crew were known to pull up on anybody they had issues with. However, none of that seemed to phase 50 Cent, because he continued to diss Fat Joe anyway. Now before I play that Fat Joe clip talking about Piggy Bank in his Cam Capone interview, I want to play what 50 Cent had to say first about why he dissed Fat Joe on that track back in the day. Here's what 50 Cent had to say. It's called Piggy Bank. Yeah. And in this record, you diss Fat Joe, you diss Jada Kiss, and you diss Nas. You know, I didn't diss anybody. I made factual statements about them. I'm responding to the things that they're doing. I hear everything, every little thing, things that they would probably think didn't count because it didn't do anything for their career. Mm -hmm. I still heard what you said. So what is it that you confronted on, on this record, Piggy Bank, concerning Jada, Fat Joe, in general? I'm responding to the things that they're doing. I mean, it's been visible. Warning shots like that just don't happen anymore today. I mean, 50 Cent literally went after every rapper that had anything to do with Ja Rule. A lot of rappers got out of the way of 50 Cent, but not Fat Joe. Fat Joe had built up such a heavy reputation in the streets that he was shocked that 50 Cent actually had the courage to diss him on a track. In this clip, Fat Joe gives his complete thoughts on Piggy Bank and the 50 Cent beef all together. I'll play the clip and then come back with my commentary. Here's what Fat Joe had to say. You know, one of the beefs that you're most popular known for is the 50 Cent stuff, man. Uh, you know, you do you do this New York, New York record with Ja Rule and Jada. You know, did you ever think, like, you know, it would turn into anything? No. Like, Ja was my man. You know what I'm saying? This was an anthem for New York. And, uh... You know, but 50, I understood, you know, I grew up in the streets and it's either predator or prey. So I understood his reasoning for going at Fat Joe because, you know, he was trying to finish Ja Rule and Fat Joe's his man. Fat Joe got a bunch of street credibility, bunch of this, you know, and he just felt like I was giving him that strength. And so he was like, yo, let's just, you know, that's like, it's like a. Putin situation, like he's just like, yo, we gotta, we gotta get Putin and his man, this man who wants to be on the front line, Pergoni, we gotta get him too. And so I understood what his thing was. Did I think he would come at me? No. And it was pretty much, it was really, it was so brilliant because it was the shock and awe effect because Fat Joe, although I worked for everything I got, Although I never extorted nobody, although I didn't bully nobody, I had the persona of New York Suge Knight. Like, you know, people feared Fat Joe and the Terror Squad in that way. You know, so for him talking about Fat Joe in the same city, it was like, you know, like <laughs> the funeral homes was like, you know, anticipating, you know, they, 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 they <laughs> They was like, oh no, they coming through. Like, you know, the funeral homes was taking, making bids. Like, oh, it's coming through. Your normal person is like, oh no. And this is like, just think of wherever you from, like two of the most dangerous crews are going crazy. And then he has such a reputation. I got such a reputation that it was not going nowhere but violence. And we were almost forced to like go crazy if we ever bumped heads. It was, it was, it was forced. Like it was like they got to go. 
You know what I'm saying? So thank God that uh, because Chris Lighty died, you know, we squashed the beef. And now we're the best of friends now. We could tell jokes about shit and, you know, it's crazy. But, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, it was, a, it, was a, it was a very tense moment. Were you surprised when he dissed you on piggy bank? Yeah, I was surprised anybody would diss me. Like I tell you, my, my reputation was pretty uh, impeccable with this game. You know, anybody who ever fronted on us, we gave it to him. So it's just... These are all facts, like you know what I mean. So like it was like almost like a suicide mission, like oh no, word, you're gonna go ahead. Like I was surprised. I was like, oh, I wasn't used to that. I had to learn. Fat Joe and Fifty Cent are cool today, but I know those lines from Piggy Bank must still sting, Fat Joe. Then again, all the shot Joe sent towards Fifty back in the day probably still bother him a little bit too. But hey, that's the competitive nature of hip hop. Now I'll play the rest of what Fat Joe had to say about 50 Cent. But before I do, I want y'all to like, subscribe, and let me know in the comment section. Who do you feel lyrically crushed 50 Cent on a diss track back in the day? Here's what Fat Joe had to say. Peace. 50 Cent taught me a lot of patience. He taught me a lot of, I had to learn. I had to adapt, you know. Was he the first person to actually go at you? Yes. And um, I had to learn. I had to learn how to not be impulsive. I had to adapt to social media. You know, I come from an era no social media. So right now, if you look at Fat Joe on Instagram, I got 5.4 million. If I was 19 years old right now, I have 200 million fans. This is their time, right? And I'm still, I still know how to tap in and be relevant on everything. You know what I'm saying? So at that time, you know, he, he was young. He knew what the social media was. I had to learn. You know, I had to learn. And so it was growing pains with 50 Cent because, you know, he would say something and I would answer back. You know, we just didn't understand. You know, like, you know, uh, social media, it ain't for real, real street guys because they we just don't know how to react on there. Like, you know, in the street, somebody says something about you, you just pull up. You know, what we doing? And social media, my in Albuquerque, New Mexico, talking like he down the block. Big time. Yeah, that's real. <laughs> no, no, it's too real. They talking to you like get, they getting spicy. But they... Uh, Moonlights away, you know, it ain't pull up over here, man. What's up? <laughs> it's like, pull up where? Like, how many times did you guys run into each other? Was it just the once at the award one show? One time in six, seven years, it was one time we ran into each other, and that was like recipe for a disaster. We we was there for the tribute for Chris Lighty, but it was almost like a setup. His trailer was in front of ours. You know, I said, 50 Cent, Fat Joe. Like, come on, what you think is going to happen? These guys are both terrible guys, man. He's, he's about to go there. Like, what? I think they set it up. Like, they was like, all right, let's see. And that day, the whole industry was out there looking like, okay, these guys been talking a lot of shit about each other. Like, it's about to go down. I believe I've interviewed somebody else and they said the same thing that they felt like they set somebody up. But you lost out on a deal, Michael Jordan? Yeah. You know, I was going to be the first artist, rapper to ever have a sneaker, a Jordan collab. And I was meeting with actual Michael Jordan, not even with like designers. And, you know, Michael Jordan was picking the, yo, I wanted to be Latino. I wanted to, like, we was, like, really meeting with Jordan here in Vegas, too, a couple of times. It was like, and then when we got into that 50 Cent beef, you know, everybody else was so nervous. And then we, we had that shit on MTV where I had dissed him live on TV and they dissed me. And it just seemed like, like I said, the funeral homes was like, 
they was waiting, you know. So Michael Jordan, who's my friend, mentor, uh, somebody who I look up to, they, and they he had to call and be like, yo, you know, I ain't into that type of stuff. Maybe in the future or something. How much do you think you lost out on beefing with 50? I don't know, man. I know if it wasn't for anything else, it would have been a great uh, thing to say. You know, I got the first Jordan collab, you know, to show it would have been a great part of history. For sure. For sure. Well, uh, Chris Lighty, you know, uh, he passes away and you guys end everything, you know. How hard or was that easy to end it? You know, like what was the process? Um, man, man, you know, it was so much bad blood, you know what I'm saying, between us. That, you know, uh, I really, really thought it would be violence. You know what I'm saying? And Chris Lighty, you know, throughout the whole thing, he discovered me. He wanted me and 50 to squash the beef and not beef through the whole time. He kept telling 50 that, kept telling me that. So when he died, I went to the funeral. I purposely went alone. Um... I didn't want these these maniacs with me, you know, so that one of them would start some shit, you know. So I made sure I went alone. And uh, 50 of them was in there. They ain't look at me up or nothing like that. But the whole funeral was scared. Like, you could just see everybody, yeah, paying respects to Chris Lighty, but Joe's back there, 50's up here. It was like tense, you know, but we didn't say nothing to nobody. And uh, to each other, I left no problem. Um, and then I got the call from BET saying, "Yo, we want to do a tribute for Chris Lighty." I said, "Yeah." They told me Fifty Cent doing it too. I said, "All right, let's go." And that's what happened. We went to rehearsal, and we ended up by each other. And you know the story. You know we made peace. And how did you guys' relationship kind of continue on from there? After that, we became really, really cool. And, you know, he would come to Miami just to visit me. And, you know, one, one year we did a birth, well, I did a birthday party for him on a yacht, big, big yacht, you know, like a 200 foot or some shit, you know? And, uh, and, you know, we cool ever since, man. He's been a man of his word. I've been a man of my word. 